The breakup of the Beatles is still a topic of discussion to this day. The positions that each one of them took were related to their personal lives and their future projects. Love, hate, depression, lawsuits and grudges are just some of the feelings that John, Paul, George, and Ringo experienced during their split. Today, we bring you 10 songs they wrote talking about the breakup and their feelings towards their bandmates. Part of his powerful All Things Must Pass, George Harrison wrote this song after his temporary departure from the Beatles in January 1969 during the troubled Get Back sessions. The lyrics reflect his frustration with the atmosphere of the group at the time, namely Paul McCartney's excessive assertiveness and criticism of his guitar playing, John Lennon's lack of commitment to the project, and Harrison's relegation as a songwriter, plus Yoko Ono's constant involvement in the band's activities. Harrison had submitted new compositions such as All Things Must Pass, Let It Down, and Hear Me Lord for consideration for the project. But according to journalist Martin O'Gorman, the songs received derision and disinterest from Lennon or indifference from McCartney. During lunch on Friday, January 10th, a more severe discussion took place in which Harrison berated Lennon for not bringing anything positive to the rehearsals. Harrison left the Beatles, saying that the others should advertise in the NME for his replacement. He then drove home to Kinfon's and wrote Wah Wah that afternoon. Wah Wah! Wah Wah! Despite the animosity between him and Lennon on the day he left the group, Harrison later confirmed a suggestion made by music journalist Timothy White that, like Lennon's songs, How Do You Sleep and Crippled Inside, the song was a slam at McCartney. In his autobiography, I Me Mine, Harrison explains that the song's title was a reference to a headache as well as a pedal, the wah-wah pedal being a guitar effect he favored for much of his life. The song's message, according to Harrison, was, you're giving me a fucking headache. Lang identifies wah-wah as directed at the artifice and pretentiousness surrounding the Beatles. Anguished by the situation that Apple was enduring, and with a manager with whom he had no sympathy at all, Paul McCartney put some of his feelings about the imminent breakup of the band into this song. You never give me your money You only give me your funny paper Klein was promising the band million-dollar contracts that were not fully reflected, the funny papers referred to all the documents that backed up the band's earnings, but were difficult to access. Composed after the disastrous Get Back sessions, the song also functions as a letter of reproach to his bandmates. Like the previous song, Harrison wrote this song shortly after the Get Back sessions. The lyrics reflect the toll that the management of his company had taken on relationships within the band especially between Paul McCartney and the other three Beatles, as well as Harrison's dismay at John Lennon's emotional withdrawal from the band. Commentators recognize Run of the Mill as one of several Harrison compositions that provide insight into the events behind the Beatles' breakup, particularly the difficulties surrounding Apple. The song's release coincided with a falling out between Harrison and McCartney, which contributed to the latter taking legal action to dissolve the Beatles' partnership. Biographers and critics have described Run of the Mill as an essay on karma, a story of lost friendship, and a love song to the Beatles. Around the time Harrison wrote Run of the Mill, a song addressing the failure of friendship within the band, or as he put it, the problem of partnerships. Run of the Mill was inspired by the dysfunction of the Beatles' final months, and especially Harrison's deteriorating relationship with McCartney. Everyone has choice, when to or not to raise their voices, it's you that decides, which way you will turn. While feeling that our love's not your concern, it's you that decides. Like a few other songs on his debut album, Man We Was Lonely was inspired by McCartney's grief over the breakup of the Beatles. McCartney experienced depressive thoughts that for a period led him to alcohol. It's nice when little words come out, like, and we was hard pressed to find a smile. I like that line. It's a hokey thing, 
I think I'm remembering it wasn't that easy when I left the Beatles. Man, we was lonely. I think it was a little bit of reflection of those times. My biggest problem was I had to sue the Beatles. I tried to sue Alan Klein, but he wasn't a party to any of the agreements. So I ended up having to sue my best friends as a technical matter. It was the last thing in the world I wanted to do, but it was pointed out to me that it was the only way to do it. I knew I had to get out and I knew I would apologize to them. And I knew once I got out, they'd get out. So if I got out of prison, I'd free them. It was a very difficult call. I went through a lot of tough times emotionally. So something like Man We Was Lonely reflects that. And we was hard pressed to find a smile, but now we're fine all the while. Written by Ringo Starr, this song was inspired by the Beatles' breakup and documents his relationship with his three former bandmates. The lyrics of the verses comment in turn on Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and George Harrison as individuals and the likelihood of each of them making music again with Starr. In the final verse, Starr offers a self-critical picture of his musical abilities and expresses the hope that the four will play together in the future. Comments have variously described early 1970s as a draft of a peace treaty and a disarming open letter from Starr to Lennon, McCartney, and Harrison. The song's working title was When Four Nights Come to Town. Ringo recorded the basic track in London in October 1970 midway through the John Lennon Plastic Ono Band album sessions, and then completed the recording with Harrison. Alan Klein suggested that the three former Beatles invite McCartney to contribute, to weaken the latter's case for the band's legal dissolution, but this did not happen. Discussing the song in a 2001 interview, Starr said it reflected how he could count on the musical support of Lennon and George Harrison after the breakup, but not of Paul McCartney. A rift had grown between Starr and McCartney in March 1970, over McCartney's refusal to have his own debut solo album delayed on the Apple Records release scheduled to avoid saturating the market with the Beatles' product. This argument, or the fact that others had sent Ringo to mediate the situation, probably further prompted McCartney to publicly announce his departure from the band. As part of their album, Living in the Material World, the song was written at a time when the former members of the Beatles were mired in legal difficulties, and Harrison, had his own plagiarism lawsuit over the similarity of My Sweet Lord to He's So Fine by the Chiffons, as well as other difficulties. I wrote it during the big suing period, and it's vaguely based on the square dance type of fiddle lyric. You serve me, I serve you, swing your partners over the Bring your lawyer, I'll bring it's again a week of the case began on February 19, 1971, and was eventually ruled in McCartney's favor, resulting in sustained animosity between the former members, which was not fully resolved until the 1990s. I Me Mine is a song by George Harrison, inspired by the bickering and negativity within the band. Lennon ridiculed him, and an argument ensued between the two musicians, during which Lennon dismissed Harrison's abilities as a songwriter. According to some authors, Lennon's resentment was probably a reaction to Harrison's productivity throughout the sessions, as he himself was incapable of writing a decent new song. Moreover, Harrison had been the only one to voice his objections to Yoko Ono's presence, telling the pair how Dylan and some other people said she had a bad reputation in New York. Although I Me Mine was considered by the Beatles to be a little more than a filler track for the album, Harrison evidently retained a liking for it. His autobiography, published in 1980, was named after the song, and he stood by its philosophical sentiments. I Me Mine is the ego problem. There are two eyes: the little eye, when people say, I am this, and the big eye i.e. duality and ego. There is nothing that isn't part of the complete whole. When the little eye merges into the big eye, then you are really smiling. In addition, it was the last song the Beatles worked on during a session as a band. Harrison, Starr, and McCartney met in the studio on January 3, 1970 to record a new version of the song. John Lennon was unavailable as he was on vacation in Denmark. Lennon had left the band in September 1969 after the release of Abbey Road. So, it is unknown whether he would have been present to record the song anyway. From John Lennon's first album, Plastic Ono Band, 
God was the subject of controversy after its release for dealing with religious themes. The song's introduction describes God as a concept by which we measure our pain. In the second part of the song, Lennon says in list form not to believe in his idols and some ideologies, finally saying to believe only in him and Yoko. The final section of the song describes Lennon's change since the breakup of the Beatles. He states that he's no longer the Dreamweaver or the Walrus. He is now just John. The last line of the song, The Dream Is Over, represents Lennon's take on the myth that the Beatles were something like God and that this had come to an end. I just believe in me. Another Ringo Starr single. Released in March 1972, the song's title was inspired by English singer-songwriter Mark Bolan. Several authors have interpreted the lyrics as an attack on Paul McCartney, reflecting Starr's disdain for the music McCartney had made as a solo artist during the previous two years. But over the years, Ringo denied it. However, the lyrics gave reason to think that perhaps this hypothesis was possible. Everything you try to do, you know it sure sounds wasted. This added to the fact that the relationship between the two was not the best in the early 1970s. Other lines of the song might seem to have been written to McCartney. Wake up, meathead. Don't pretend that you're dead. Get yourself up off the cart. Author Keith Badman writes that Boogaloo had been long cited as Paul's nickname by his former bandmates Starr, Harrison, and Lennon. While John Lennon, and to a lesser extent, George Harrison, were happy to write openly about the Beatles, Apple, and their associated problems, Paul McCartney preferred to couch his objections in metaphor and ambiguity. Regardless of his intentions, McCartney would have known that lines such as, When I thought you was my friend, but you let me down, put my heart around the bend, and My dog, he got three legs, but he can't run, would be analyzed by legions of Beatles watchers, and he cannot have failed to recognize that the lines would be interpreted as a commentary on his former band. Well, that's all for now. There are still a few more songs that could be in a second part. If you liked it, we invite you to subscribe and like our video. Comment below what you think, and we hope to make great videos for you this 2024. Thanks for watching. This is Music Box. My dog, he got three legs, but he can run. A fly flies in, a fly flies out.